We'll continue here with a couple more examples of hydraulic systems. In this problem, let's first make note of a couple of things that I've indicated here. One, I've got some kind of pressure being supplied at, at an inlet here. These symbols here represent that I have some resistance in these, in these pipes. Let's go ahead and assume that, that just to make them different from the previous examples, these are linear. So we'll call this one R1, R2, so, and these are R3. Just to make, assume that these are linear pressure drops. Maybe they're longer pipes. Another tank here, call this tank one, another tank two. Can we call this a tank? We assume that the pressure along the bottom of this tank is <clears throat> is uniform. The exit pressure here we'll assume is known. So it's it's again applying a known pressure on this side here. Okay. I may not work this problem completely um, in the interest of time, but just a couple of different things to show you. How would you begin writing the equations? How many equations do you need? Well, there's no indicated well, I'm not indicating, I'm indicating these are short pipes with linear friction, linear fluid friction. So there's no kinetic energy storage here. There's only potential energy storage. So the only possible dynamic states are the volume one and volume two. So right away, you can just focus on writing two ODEs, right? So that most you can have two states, right? V1 and V2. And I'm going to write just the continuity equation for each one of those. V.1 is going to be the flow coming in through here. There's no flow coming in indicated up here, but then there's the flow going out. So let's call that, say, QS coming into here. And let's call this one Q1 to 2, say. So that's, and note since that's leaving, I'm going to call that flow 1 to 2. The rate of change of the volume in tank 2 is flow 1 to 2 coming in, so that's positive, minus Q exit. Okay. This can be a little confusing. I'm, you might think that I'm, I'm that this is my source, but I'm, I'm going to I'm going to just to make it clear that that this is kind of the source or a known input on this side, and this is the consequence of what happens across here. I have pressure driving. Know that there's a pressure down here. We're going to call that P two, and that's the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of tank one. So you have two. Well, this is B dot two, isn't it? So, so to, in order to finish writing these equations, right, you need to get rid of the variables in terms of what either inputs or states. The inputs are PS and P exit, and the states are V1 and V2. So QS needs to be expressed in terms of 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 pressures that we know, which is the pressure. Uh, and the outside here being forced and at the pressure of the bottom thing. So, for, for example, QS, you know, where would you get that? Well, for that resistive element, remember the, I'm going to call that P1. Oops, let's call that PR1, because I call that P1. That is R1 times QR1, right? And QR1 is, is that flow you know, also coming through here. So that's equal to, 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 to QS. I should have probably called that QR1 instead of QS. But um, PR1, what is that? Well, that's the, the difference across here. PR1 is, is the pressure PS minus P1. So this we know from the source, and P1 we would know because that's the pressure at the bottom of that tank, right? So it's going to be C1 times V1. I'm sorry, 1 over C1 times V1. So what that allows you to find is, at the end of the day, that QS, right, which, as I said, I should have called it QR1, uh, is equal to 
what um, 1 over r1 times pr1 or 1 over r1 times the difference ps which is known minus 1 over c1 times v1 right so I've determined one of those terms again in terms of a input and a state you continue this way right to find the flow coming out here and I should call that QR2 right instead of our Q12 is what I called it but it really is the flow through resistance 2 you should see again what I'm going to do is something similar here it's going to be since I can find the pressure drop across this resistive element as R2 times the flow through there I can find the flow as a function of the pressure and 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 that pressure is the difference and I'm going to know that pressure and that pressure and that's that pressure difference and so on and that's how you continue on this problem you'd be able to find the Q exit the same way pressure to the different the pressure difference in this case is P2 minus P exit and so on let you finish that one as an exercise.